so करेंगे। Friends, let me first of all pay my tribute to Rohit Vimula as well as other students who lost their life in HCU and all over India you see the students even a student like Delta Meghwal who lost her life prematurely and nothing comes out of that so I remember them at other note let me also uh, recall very mysteriously missing our brother Najib. And this is a very unique phenomenon on the campuses which has started, I will say, one decade or one and a half decades because I was a student here on the campus say two and a half decades before and uh, we did have clashes and that was the time Mandal had just left and aftermath of Mandal was there so and this this hostel used to be very notorious very much divided on caste lines each election election of presidential president of the hostel or even uh, elections of uh, at that time the mess secretary elections was also contested so there was a lot of division and uh, I still remember that there was mass resonation from very progressive organization in against Mandal Commission. Very progressive organization. You can understand, I will not name. I am now a teacher. Had I been a student, I would have named. But you all know. So, tensions were there. Caste tensions were there. And this campus was well known for its communal amity because we all participated in Idul, Idul Fitr. We all sat on Rosa Bay for iftars in the evening and we participated. So in that sense, you know, the composition gradually started changing. The university composition started gradually changing. <clears throat> Those were the times when we could only see posters of Marx, Lenin, Stalin, Bhagat Singh. But now this is the time when we start also viewing posters of Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Jyoti Baba Phule, Savitri Bai Phule, and many more Bahujan, Birsa Munda, many more Bahujan social reformers. You know, they are talked if I still remember people started organizing talks on Periyar, Phule, Savitri Bai Phule. As students, we never heard those talks on the campus. It is only after teach when I became teacher 2000 onwards that you know UDSF and others started organizing. But <coughs> gradually, what I see that there is a compositional change on the campuses, <coughs> and that is why composition change not only in central universities but throughout, and there is a movement outside. A Bahujan movement, I would say that it began more in the iconic form. It was more in 
Bamsef. Bamsef was one of the, uh, say, uh, highlighting point of Bahujan movement. Before that, Dalit Panthers, RPI, they were doing their work, no doubt. But with Bamsef, there was a very different type of energy. The type of icons with Bamsef started popularizing. And as a person from North India, you know, we could never hear Phule, we could never hear Sahu, we could never hear Pia, Peria. But these words were no more words. They became leaders, they became movements. And that is why we could try to associate ourselves. Uh, of course, Manu Ashiram was one of the leading light at that time. Cadder camps among the among the Dalit Bahujan concept cadder camps. This was a very new experiment of Bamsa. <coughs> and gradually an ideological plan was created. You know, in 1995, 96, in this campus. Bahujan Student Federation was formed, though it was short-lived, but it was formed. The point I'm trying to make that the upsurge of the Bahujan students is not very old phenomena. It is very, very, very new phenomena. And the most important aspect of this assertion is that they all want an independent assertion of their own organization. They don't want to be led by some other. And I'm reminded of one saying which I usually keep on telling to my students as well. They have learned a lesson from that saying, Jiska mutta uski ladai, jiski ladai uski agwai. Whose agenda? Leadership is her or his. And that is the fight which we want to fight or contest in your own stewardship. You don't want to be led by A, B, C and that is what is the problem. People don't want that you should lead an independent organization of your own with your own slogan, with your own icon, with your own ideology. They don't want. You should be always a follower. That the fight is that. <clears throat> Therefore, friends, my humble submission today on this historic day when we are commemorating, remembering the sacrifices made by our students is this that the fights are at different levels people usually think that there is an ideological fight and they want to argue that it is a fight between state and students of Bhagavan Samad that is one level of contradiction that is one level of fight that always is visible. There is a state led by an ideological plan and that state has an onslaught on the university system and within the university then it goes to Bahujan students. That is one way you can analyze that there is always a tussle. Whether it is right, whether it is centrist, political organization, there is always an onslaught. And why I am saying there is an onslaught? Why? Because Nowadays, the, the head of the institution is no more a entity which is neutral entity, chosen on its worth, not at all. The head of the institution is no more chosen on his or her worth. It is chosen on the commitment towards the ideology of the state. <clears throat> and that is why the whole institution, head of the institution, the whole institution, which we call as we see, they don't see. <laughs> that is the point. They only, they only have a commitment towards someone else. And therefore, 
that fight is a very very long there's a very broad fight between the state and the state's ideology and but i have want to bring to your kind notice university is a site of discrimination university as a site of discrimination and this this is a very 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 difficult terrain to understand the discrimination one and two the discrimination is difficult why it is very difficult to understand because you know every every discriminatory practice is an individualistic practice very unique to the individual and second it is very sophisticated no more you are untouchable therefore i will not sit you no more i will not share with your my room because you are so and so but there is very sophisticated way to tell you what you are isn't it and that's what the fight is very very difficult so what is this how to how to actually make sense of this unique cases of atrocity you methodologically what you can do is that you can understand a running thread in these atrocities there is a similarity ek samanta hai in cases ke andar and then if you draw a line that similarity if you start drawing the similarity then you get the pattern of discrimination before rohit vemula there were eight other cases and if you start looking at discriminatory practices they are similar similarly in jain you will find discriminatory one of <coughs> one of the students who has done right now of mphil dissertation very glaring examples we we also did our research on the campus do you believe in caste everybody says no how can you say i don't <laughs> caste how can you say and when we served our questionnaire to our utter surprise we did not get any results then we said oh it's a caste free zone very nice let me change the question and we wrote why do you feel in this incarnation in this incarnation are you uh, do you feel that you are well placed in this incarnation all said yes then we went another check up question is it <coughs> why do you feel you are at this level in this incarnation is it because of your karma everybody did so now you can understand who believes in karma if you believe in karma that means you believe in your last incarnation and that cycle from where does it come it comes from the caste philosophy that whatever you are now and if you are in good position it is because of the deeds of your last incarnation aapke puran pehle jan ka jo hai phal hai pratifal hai ki aap itne saaj sachha saman ke andar paida hue so you can understand that how people believe in caste it is so sophisticated that you will not be able to believe it and therefore fight becomes even more and more difficult they will not tell you they will not tell you that you are so and so oh you don't to speak sophisticated english your english is very very rustic and therefore i don't think that you can present a paper you should should not present a paper theek hai bhai nahi karega but 
even after becoming a teacher in this campus and having taught for 15 years, I am not fit to give a lecture in the lecture series <laughs> held on. <laughs> now you can understand. It is, it is not actually, it is not that I can't speak very fluent English. It's not that I do not know concept of nation given by Benedict Anderson or you know any other uh, Perry Anderson or any other political scientist. It is not that I know how many types of nationalism <coughs> exist in India. But you don't want to associate with the movements which are on the campus. You want to monopolize the space. You want to monopolize the intellectual space which is emerging from this particular section. And that is what is the real fight, friends. That it is not, it is not that actually that you are being pushed here and there. Nobody wants to give you an independent space to contest, to fight, to assert. That is the question. And that is the resolve, I think, Rohit wanted to take, that they wanted to have an independent asa. But you can label, but nobody will come to your festival. The second thing, how many levels of discrimination exist? One is, of course, the head of the institution. The head of the officers of the institution from, from you can say, uh, registrar, <coughs> deputy registrars, assist, assistant registrars. If you go with your Rajiv Gandhi National uh, RGNF form, how many times you are welcome to walk in with even a clerk? They will not even welcome you warmly that time you have come. And how many times RGNF comes in time? Why Rajiv Gandhi National Fellowship can't come in time? It never happens with UGC. UGC Fellowship comes in time but RGNF never. Why? Is this not a <coughs> subtle way of discrimination? It is not the subtle way to disturb you. The next time when you go to your hostel mess, people will say, Are, bhai, aapne to, jo hai, ye dekhe, hai aapka. And you feel ashamed. So at this level, at the level of highest functionary, at the level, level of clerks and the uh, administration, the third level is of course the teacher. And teachers, I'm talking about teachers at different <coughs> levels. There was a very recent in, academic, uh, in, in Board of Studies, there was a paper which came for discussion. <coughs> and what was the title of the paper? Ideas of Nation, Colon, Gandhi and Tagore. So I asked, is there any academic reason to uh, Delete name of Ambedkar in nation? No, no, we are teaching in MA. What is this logic? You are teaching in MA, but you cannot teach Ambedkar in MPhil. And first of all, the whole problem of personification of a title of the paper. How can you personify a title with two names only and that too at, at the level of nationalism? That means you are trying to you are trying to uh, say highlight certain personalities, give them a higher pedestal and denigrate the others or you want to say that only these people have talked about nationalism, others have not. I asked that, have you read anything of Ambedkar and there was a pin drop silence. He said he is the only person who has written the full volume on nationalism. But there is this exclusion, an exclusion at the level of, at the level of pedagogy as well as curriculum. One of my friends asked to his teacher, Sir, you are not teaching Lohia. 
Why are not teaching Lohia? No, no, we have kept Lohia. How? In passing. Ambedkar in passing. Lohia in passing. But the main text is Gandhi and Tripod. So I can go on on this curriculum. Please read my article. Also, I have written that how the curriculum exclusion takes place in sociology. That's a different board. So, at the curriculum, teachers start excluding at the curriculum. Now, this leads to alienation. When your icons are not taught in the classroom, when their values, their movements are not celebrated in the classroom, you start feeling alienated. But the problem is that the institutions, the organizations, like your organization, BAPSA, UDSF, ASA, they all start celebrating now on the campuses. I was in Lucknow Ambedkar University. They had organized a talk on Periyar and what has happened that the, the students who organized the talk and the teachers who had booked the hall, there is an inquiry going against them. Why? Because you people were very abusive. How can you say that somebody was abusive? Have you taped it? Nothing. People told that you were abusive. So there should be an inquiry. <laughs> now there is an inquiry. Now I want to ask that what is a university? Is university an institution which is which comprises the finished human resource or a university is a place where people learn with error and trial method? Is this a finished ideology with which the students come here? I don't think so. My experience of quarter a century now, I have seen that students with extreme left have gone to multinational corporations. The students with the left have joined Congress. And not at all, you, you remember students from left have gone to right. If there would have been finished items, finished good as such, then they would have definitely, you could have done something which you wanted, but each time if they commit mistake, penalize them, give them, reprimand them, but how can you say that no, you are terminated? No, that they are not finished good, and that's what the university is all about, we all learn Error by error and even teachers learn with error and trial method and that's why experiments fail so many experiments even in environmental studies one 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 cent one center you know the fire cat there the whole uh, laboratory was burnt it's not that we don't learn so experiments fail and experiments with people <coughs> also fail we are not finished good so in that sense, I want to argue that if there is an earth, if a student, according to them, though in, in, in youth, what is youth? Youth is there with bundle of energy and experimenting. And that's what the experiment people do with ideology, with organization, with their books, with their writers. But why people can't digest? People think that you should be, you know, coming with 26 years old person and join. So, Ambedkar and Bhagat Singh organization. Hey, what is this combination? I don't know. What is the IQ? What is the ideology? But you have an organization. You can do it. Because there is nobody to question you. But when it comes this side, that's where I want to caution you. The independent assertion of the students, of Bahujan students, is the real, real issue of today's democratic politics. Why? It is because Bahujan students' politics do not have a patronage. 
most of the student organization, right, left, center, extreme left, they all have a patronage of their parent organization. Name any organization, they all have a patronage. And that is why certain individuals were saved and they became hero. And they were pitched against Rohit Vemula. I'm pained. I'm pained because some, some, some people clubbed with their own formal and informal organizations. Their voices in parliament, their voices in Supreme Court. They suppressed the sacrifice, supreme sacrifice made by them. Because they had patronage. But Rohit, Rohit Vemula did not have patronage. And that's where I think the challenge of the Bahujan students' politics, Bahujan student organization, is that how to create institutions which can really fight their battle at the national level. How can you really, because it's not only that you assert, it is also that you have to say it. To keep your idealism alive, you have to be alive also. If you don't keep your, if you don't keep yourself alive, your idealism will also die with you. And then I will request, I will argue, I will, I, I will uh, urge that please keep yourself alive. <clears throat> and once you're alive, only then you can keep your ideas up alive. <coughs> only one, one more point and it's it. Now, the last point which I want to make is that you have discrimination outside the state and the fight is going on. Within the within university as a site, you have the highest individuals sitting in the administration. Uh, academic councils as well as your students, roommates, political organizations. But what is the way out? This discrimination. What is the way out? I keep on telling my students and myself being a student, I keep on telling that what is the prime job of a student? And because students are different. They are not same. They are not on the same pedestal. The students come from very different background and each student who come from different background had their own agenda. But what is the agenda of the Bahujan students? Ambedkar long ago when giving this you know, speech in Calcutta to the students he was asking that you know, you have number of responsibilities in one go. It's not only one responsibility that you study and complete your own work. No, you have a responsibility towards your own community. And I add that it is not only to community, but to your immediate family. How are you going to create a balance between these three responsibilities? Responsibilities to your own self, I am undermined. Otherwise it becomes four level of responsibilities. Responsibility to your own self, 